welcome to the fish room everyone. Uh, today's video is going to be a lot about German Blue Rams. Uh, I actually want to show some of the babies, me cleaning their containers and feeding them. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there now about breeding German Blue Rams and I've done a few videos in the last few weeks on them. Um, but I think today's video is going to be pretty good. Uh, they're a little bit bigger, they're really good examples of uh, growing the babies out the first week or two and I actually have some eggs hatching out. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the fry. I'm, I'm gonna start cleaning their containers and then we're gonna go ahead and feed these guys. This is kind of my grow out situation here. So what I do is I have a, I've talked about this before, but I use a white bowl. Um, that way it's not clear and it has no corners. So this is really good for hatching the fry, growing them out. Um, they'll stay in this container almost a month sometimes. Uh, at least till the size they are now. Um, you can see next to this like a red solo cup and a turkey baster. I uh, kind of give you a visual of the zero stone. You can see how small they are. Um, they're probably about the size of a guppy fry, a little bit larger depending on the size of the guppy. They're pretty fragile until they're of this size. Once they hit this size, um, they almost get like an orangish color because they're eating so much brine shrimp, you know that they're feeding. Uh, whenever they're a little bit younger, you'll see which ones start to feed and which ones are still not feeding um, because they'll get much larger and they'll change color a little bit uh, because they're eating so much brine shrimp, their bellies are full of that orange or red shrimp. Uh, it actually changes the look of the fish. But this is the, one of the coolest things I wanna show you guys. Um, using an air stone, uh, you can see they're all schooling out. When they're so, the school like that and they swim to the top of the water, really good signs. Uh, the fish are strong, they're not sitting on the bottom on their sides. But let's take a close look. It's gonna be very hard to see, um, but there's brine shrimp in here from the morning and it's still alive. So I started to clean a little bit my turkey baster here and this cup's about half full. So I did get some um, leftover food off the bottom and I'm gonna get a flash it, but if you see those little specks, they're still squirming and swimming around. So all these little dots there, especially on top of the water, that's live baby brine shrimp. And I fed these guys around 10 o'clock this morning it's almost 10 o'clock tonight, it's nine o'clock. So they went 11 hours in this container and the food is still alive. And that's a constant food source for these guys all day long. And I'm only feeding these fry twice a day. So I'm not gonna tell you, you have to stay home from work or be home 24 seven to breed these fish. If you do it this way and you don't have a filter in the tank and it's not an actual aquarium, if you're using these bowls to use just an air stone, um, you clean any, waste off the bottom daily. Um, the fish will stay healthy. They have a lot of food source. It's just kind of a trial and error with how much air you need. Make sure that they actually are fertilized, they hatch. It's a little bit of a numbers game and I've said that in the past, um, but it's not as hands-on as some people say. It's still a lot of work. I mean, it's daily work. You can't let it go for two or three days. Um, these guys will not go 24 hours, 48 hours without your assistance. They need your help. Um, but I think that's really cool. You can see them actually swimming around and I'm ready to feed them again. So I want to give them fresh food, but it's so cool to see that 11 hours later, that brine shrimp that's supposed to live in salt water um, can still stay alive in this freshwater container and those fry can feed on it all day long. As for cleaning, like I said, I did start. Uh, a lot of the bottom of this container here is dirty. Uh, that's kind of what I turkey basted off the bottom. That's a dead brine shrimp. It'll kind of clump up. Uh, the rest of this is not really anything too harmful. The bottom's relatively clean. If you can, you can kind of corner this and get any leftover uh, eggshells. But right now, all I'm gonna do is lift the container up, dump out maybe half the water into uh, just a dirty bucket. And I'll do that right now. I'll take my little clip off. This helps me elevate the air so it's not on the bottom of it. I don't want the air all the way down here. I'll usually lift it 50% up. So it's gonna give them aeration, uh, surface agitation, uh, but it's not going to constantly tumble the fish. They can kind of go lower to the bottom and take a break from swimming if they need to. But I'm going to go ahead and corner the bowl where they're not swimming and just kind of dump out about 20 to 50% of the water. Depends how dirty it is and how often you're doing it. Um, if you're doing 50% every day and they're used to it, keep doing 50%. Uh, if you do 10% every day for a week, don't go ahead one day and just do a huge 80% water change on the bowl. Uh, it's just too much of a shock. It's just like anything in your fish tanks. If you do weekly water changes, do them weekly. If you do monthly, don't go ahead and start doing water changes daily. It's too much of a um, 
change for the fish. But you can see they're all right there, swimming around. I'm gonna go ahead, I have a bucket of dechlorinated regular tap water and it's sitting in the fish room which is heated. So it's gonna match the temperature, it's gonna be clean, it's already dechlorinated. Uh, take a few scoops out of that and I'm gonna fill this container up, I'll show you that. You don't want the fry getting thrown around too much, but you don't have to be too delicate either. I mean, you can kind of just slowly pour it in on the corner. After doing all the main stuff off the bottom, go ahead and just kind of fill that back up to the same height you had. If there's any uh, waste on the side, like any fish food or anything sitting there, wipe it off before it uh, fills back up. Cause you don't want that to go in the water if you can. But that's about three cups right here and they're ready to go so they got their water change even though there is some food left in there i want to give them fresh food um because i'm really doing it twice a day and either way that brine shrimp needs uh used up and then it's going to need made a new jar i guess uh, which i actually bought some today and it came in the mail so i'll show you where i'm getting my eggs also here's my brine shrimp hatchery uh real simple i have these cups here that these uh, two liters sit inside of. So right there, just a regular cup, um, little Tupperware. These sit in there upside down, and I cut the bottoms off. And they're, they're upside down, I cut the bottoms off. Two liters, um, I only fill them halfway up, so it's about a liter of water. Um, to make this brine shrimp, uh, while we're talking, I'm gonna pull this out, because whenever you go to feed, you wanna pull the air stone, let them settle to the bottom. Wait maybe a minute or two. You don't want to wait five or ten minutes or a half hour. The brine shrimp will start to die. Uh, and you do not want to feed them dead brine shrimp. If you smell a container, it smells nasty. There's dead shrimp in there. You don't want to feed it. Um, but it should just kind of smell like salty water, which is what it is. Um, to make this, uh, let me put a little light on here for us. These do not need a light just for the record. A lot of people use a light to attract them. They'll put it here and let them swim to it. Um, but the way I do it, I feed so early on, whenever the eggs hatch, they sink to the bottom um, and they can't really swim much. They're kind of like a wiggler of the shrimp version. So whenever they're down there, I'll base their amount from the bottom and I'll feed those. So to do a light's kind of pointless and it'll kind of heat them up too much. Um, so it's just extra work for no reason. But it's, I mean, I understand the reason behind it, but you don't have to do it. Uh, the way I do this, I will feed this jar and I'll rotate. So this is the newer jar i'm going to feed this off tonight i'll take it out rinse it out scrub it real quick and then i'll slide that jar over put the new jar in the back to make the brine shrimp uh, i'm actually going to start siphoning this out as we talk um, but to make the brine shrimp i use one tablespoon of uh, salt i use just regular sea salt you buy it like the grocery store um, it doesn't really matter what kind you just don't want to i mean as long as it's natural sea salt uh, and you can see these are pretty orange, so there's still a lot of good eggs in here. Um, but you'll use one tablespoon of salt and a half teaspoon of brine shrimp eggs. Uh, whenever you're doing that, I basically just cover the top. I start sprinkling the eggs on top. And once it covers the surface, it ends up being about half of a teaspoon. Yeah, I'm saying that right. So a tablespoon of salt, half teaspoon of shrimp. Um, and that's it. You do that, you throw the air stone in there. I use these little uh, straight tubes so it stays straight, sits at the bottom. I'm not going through air stones. It goes right in the, the triangle bottom, wherever the cap is. And that way you're gonna constantly tumble those eggs till they hatch. Uh, my room is a little bit warmer. It's around 80 degrees, so they hatch a little bit faster. So I usually get eggs hatching at around 12, eight, like probably 18 hours. Um, so I'll get my food a lot sooner. I just I go through two jars. I use two jars, I go through a jar a day. So um, I'll make a, a jar before I go to bed or first thing in the morning. So I have two, just for example, I just use that. I'll probably, uh, later on when the video's off, I'll take the air stone out again, I'll feed whatever's left to my guppies because there won't be a whole lot. It's not gonna be red and orange like this is. It's gonna be a lot uh, clearer because there's not as many shrimp in there. So I'll feed it off and then if I'm feeling lazy, I'll leave it there. And the next morning, I'll feed this jar and I'll clean this jar and make a new one. Or before I go to bed, I'll clean the jar and I'm still gonna feed this tomorrow regardless. Um, but as long as you're doing that every day, whether you do it every morning or every night, uh, try to keep that time consistent. Uh, that way you have a whole day 
of using a jar, a whole day of tumbling a jar, and then you keep rotating them through. Um, so that's basically the way you do it. I do this all year round. So if you want to do it just when they're fish are breeding, same thing. Or whenever you are done using it, finish the jar, don't refill it, use the next day, finish it, and then just kind of stop it right there. Uh, but let's go ahead and feed these guys. I hope that wasn't too long. Uh, the brine shrimp is not as hard as it seems. And when you buy it, and I just got off Amazon for $55 through Brine Shrimp Direct. And that same jar, it's 16 ounces. It lasts me around 11 months. So I'm just finishing my last jar. That one cost me around $70. They're usually 60 to 70. I found them for 55. Hopefully they're just as good. Um, it's just through uh, the direct source. I think they're a little bit cheaper. But that $70 over 11 months, you're spending around like, I would say like seven or eight dollars a month on brine shrimp, and you're feeding hundreds and hundreds of fish every single day. Uh, so it's really cheap if you look at it. And salt's like three dollars for a, a container of that, and it lasts you a few months. But let's go ahead and feed these guys. I don't want to talk too much on this, but I want to cover as much as I can. I think I already mentioned this, but it is important to not let these uh, shrimp sit too long without air. So if they're sitting there for a while, I uh, go ahead and kind of blow some air in them to kind of tumble around because they will start dying in here uh, or when you pull the air stern after about five minutes um, they will start dying you don't want to feed dead shrimp if the container smells bad like dead fish or shrimp uh, make a new jar and kind of skip that day try to feed a different food source like pelleted foods or uh, crushed up flakes but for these I'm just going to go ahead take a real little bit pour it in there they're kind of hiding around the corner um, I actually have have another container of German Blue Rams. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna clean them and then feed them real quick while I have this out and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so I got the water change. I probably did around 60%. Um, I usually tell people a little bit less and then you can kind of do more as you're comfortable because um, it's always safer to do less than more but they do better with larger as long as you don't ever do it. Um, so I did that water change. I'm just gonna add the brine shrimp. Um, that's plenty if not too much. And then I'm gonna Add their air stone back in. I'll clip this on the side. I uh, usually don't even clip the air stone. I let it go in between so it's free. And I'll pull it up so it's around halfway down the container. And these guys are ready to go. Uh, the whole process of my shrimp and the care for them, my fish, sorry, the German Blue Rams. So the whole thing probably takes me 10 minutes a day. So it's not a huge amount of time, but it is every single day you need to do it. Uh, it takes me a few minutes to feed them before and after work. Uh, the brine shrimp takes me probably three, four, five minutes to do every day. I gotta pull the air stone. I'll let them settle while I feed my other fish. Face them out, feed these guys, and then I gotta actually dump out the old ones, make a new jar. But it really takes me like five minutes. It's not that much time. It's just it's like a chore. You have to do it. And then cleaning these guys takes me about a minute a jar. I can go through siphon real quick, dump out some water, top it off with water I've sitting there ready for them. Um, it's about 10 minutes a day, it's not, not that hard. But let's go ahead, I'll wrap it up. I think that covered a lot of topics. So I talked about, let's think. Um, I've talked before about hatchy fish. This is about raising German Blue Ram. So to raise them, I'm gonna just think as I walk you guys through what, what kind of a recap. Uh, you do them in a container, you have the air stone about halfway up. You want them to be around a week, 10 days, two weeks old. They start to get some more size. They start to get that orange color. You've been feeding brine shrimp twice a day. Uh, go ahead, cycle through those jars. Um, one every day, going through two. So they're never more than 48 hours old. So you have fresh eggs. The shrimp sit on the bottom whenever you pull the air stone. Uh, so they're not old. Once they start swimming to the top, uh, they're too old, they're too big for their mouths, they're not as nutritious. So you want to feed them as early on as possible. Feed them twice a day. Before you feed, you want to do your water changes, siphon off the bottom. Uh, dump out any water that you need to to kind of get that 50% water change. Top it off with the same temperature water. Regular tap water, these fish want consistent water. You don't want to do the RO mixing with the pH and messing with all that. There's just too much and the fish are going to be a lot more stable and they're going to be harder in the long run. If they get a little bit of dirty water, they get the pH to settle and everything's going to be good. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. It's just kind of trial and error to get them to live the first week, the first 10 days or so. That's the hardest, part, the hardest part. And that brings me to the next topic um, of these fish I have right here I want to show you. 
So right next to it, I'm actually hatching out some of these rams. So the fish spawned again. I'll pull us out. These probably been here for about two, maybe three days. And you can see in here some fungus eggs, the white ones, and some fertile eggs that are like a reddish orange color. And there's some bald spots in between. That's because they're just starting to hatch. So if you look over here, I know my camera's not amazing, but these eggs over here that are off the flower pot and they float around, look at that. Those are some wigglers. Those are just hatching out. Some are still hatching. There's still eggs. Um, it's so close. Sorry, sorry if it's uh, shaking a little bit. But those are all brand new baby German Blue Rams. So kind of a cool process. This is kind of day one, really like day three or four after the fish breed. So I tumble them in here, this container in that flower pot. I put the air stone at the back. So they're not on the eggs, but it's pushing water up. It's coming through the front and it's going to give them a constant flow. They have some methylene blue in there. They finally start hatching out. The flower pots are great because I keep the air cranked up till they all hatch. And the ones that have hatched are going to go settle behind the pot so they don't have as much of a current. So they're not getting killed, they're not getting tossed around, um, but you're still hatching as many eggs as possible that are uh, still trying to hatch. So I think that's really cool. I think I got a quick close up on those fry. You kind of see the eyes and them uh, still kind of bent in half. They're wiggling around, but that's pretty cool. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, I just know whenever I started breeding German Blue Rams two, three years ago, I really wish there was more information, more videos like this to kind of show you what it looks like, actual having success, not uh, someone's first time breeding the fish, kind of just uh, recording it and sharing it. Um, I know this works. I have fish that are adults that have been breeding. Um, I haven't bought in German Blue Rams any pairs in, since I've started. It's been two or three years. And I've gone through multiple generations of fish. So I've, I've done it um, and I wanna help other people be able to do it too. Uh, if you're looking for any rams, I do sell them on my website along with bristlenose, ple bristlenose plecos and guppies at biancosfish.com. Um, but like I said, thanks for watching guys. I just know my prior self looking for this information, it was harder to find. Um, it wasn't very thorough. And if it was, it was kind of overkill. It was too much stuff to do. It was almost overwhelming. It's really not that hard. Keep the fish clean, feed them with food that's gonna stay in the container as a constant food source, something they're gonna eat, and how to do, do the food. So you're just doing the brine shrimp, you're feeding them, you're cleaning the water, um, you're not spending hours a day, you're spending 10 minutes a day, something practical. Um, I'm not doing anything in my water, I'm putting it in a bucket, I'm dechlorinating it, I'm letting it say room temperature or just throw a heater in there if you don't have a heated room. So it's all pretty easy stuff, you just gotta do the work and it doesn't take that long. So like I said, thanks for watching guys. I really hope this helped everyone out. Um, if you're not already subscribed, go below, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, it helps me out, helps me know what people like watching, what they wanna see, and I just kind of enjoy sharing it with you guys. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks one more time. Um, I will see you guys soon.